Okay, so last, I believe it might be the last um, lesson for chapter two before we move on is finding a percent of a number. So now we're going to take everything that we've learned and apply it like we would in the real world. So if I asked you like what your percent was on your test or what percent off on a sale item did you get when you bought it? Um, this is what you will use this information for. So the first thing I want to make sure that you guys know is the word of. The word of in math means to multiply. So when you're looking up word problems, and you say, what is the percent of 50? That just means we're gonna multiply. For instance, we have 10% of 50. Just means I'm gonna multiply 10% times 50. Of course, I can't do that, right? Because I have a percent and I have a whole number. So that's not comparing apples to apples, um, but you get the picture. The word of means to multiply. All right, so how do we do that? My computer's lagging today. All right, so steps to get the percent of a number. First thing I need to do is write the percent as a fraction or a decimal. because I can multiply a decimal just as easy as I can multiply a fraction. Um, step two is I'm gonna multiply it. So whatever I changed it into, a fraction or a decimal, I'm gonna multiply that with the number that represents the total. So what I'm actually saying up there is there's a total of 50, and I want to know how many is 10%. So I'm going to multiply my percent or uh, my fraction or my decimal by the number that represents the total. Really important that you understand the part, part whole of math, understanding what a part of a number is, a fraction is part of a number, a decimal is part of a number. Okay, so understanding what the parts and what the wholes are. And then if I use fractions, I'm going to divide by 100. Only if I use fractions. All right, so 10% of 50. All right, so this is 10%, which means over 100, right? This means multiply. This is my total. So I'm going to multiply my percent once I've switched over to a decimal or a fraction. Okay, let's try it. All right, let's say I have... 300 students total. Fifteen percent of those students like cheese. I want to know what is fifteen percent of thirty. Oh, I'm sorry, three hundred. Okay, so I have fifteen percent of means multiply 30. So I need to change one of them or I need to change the percent to a fraction or a decimal. In this case, I'm going to use a fraction. So 15 over 100, right? Because percent tells me over 100. And then I also know that a whole number is always over one. So make that note. Just like a decimal always goes behind a whole number, a whole number is always over one. Okay, 
And then I'm just going to multiply across, which is what we're going to be moving into for chapter four before we do benchmarks. So I got 15 times 300 over 100 times one. Okay, so 15 times three is 45. I've got two zeros, so it's 4,500. 100 times one is 100. Okay, so now I've got 4,500 over 100, and I need to divide that, right? The fraction sign is a division sign. So step three would be to take 4,500 and divide it by 100. So 100 goes into 454 times, and then goes into 500 five times which leaves me with 45. So 45 students out of the 300 like cheese. All right, let's say I want to do this as a decimal. Let's do it as a decimal. So I have 0 0.15, right? Because 15% is 15 over 100 or, or 15 hundredths times 300. So I'm gonna do 300 times 0.15 so I don't have to do the multiplication on the, the zero. So five times zero is zero, five times zero is zero, five times three is 15. Placeholder is zero, because now I'm gonna multiply my tenths place. One times zero, zero, one times zero, zero, one times three is three. I have zero, zero, five, and four. I have two decimal places, move the decimal two times. My answer is 45, which is the same answer that I got. Okay, what if I have numbers bigger than 100? We'll do some more practice problems in a minute. I just want to make sure I get all the notes. So what if I have numbers or percents that are bigger than 100? Here is my steps. Again, I'm going to turn into the fraction. or a decimal, but then if I turn it into a fraction, I must simplify. It would make my life so much better. Before I do anything else, if I turn it into a fraction, I simplify that fraction. Step two, multiply the numerators just like I did before. And then multiply the denominators. Unless I use decimals, then I'm just gonna multiply the decimals. And then I'm gonna divide, right? Oops. Okay, so let's take this number then. So I have 145% of 320. Okay, this means times, this is total. So I'm going to turn this into a fraction, 145 over 100. And I wanna simplify it. So I'm gonna divide both by five to make a smaller fraction. Uh, five goes into 14 three times, carry the one. Uh, five goes into, oh, five doesn't go into there three times. I caught myself so you guys don't get candy, sorry. All right. Five goes into 14 two times. That gives me 10. Carry four over to 45. Five goes into 45 nine times. Then 100 divided by five is 20. So I have 29 over 20. And then I can multiply that 29 over 20 by 320 over one, or times, not divide. 320 over one, so I'm gonna multiply. 29 times 320 over 20 times 1. Oh, let me fix this. So we're not going to divide by 100. We're going to divide by denominator. Okay. 
So 29 times 320 is 9,280. And then I'm going to divide that by 20. Twenty goes into nine zero times. Twenty goes into ninety four times. That gives me eighty. Two minus zero is two. Nine minus one. I mean nine minus eight is one. Bring that down. Twenty goes into one hundred twenty eight six times. Twenty times six is one hundred twenty. Gives me eight. Twenty goes into eighty four times. So my answer should be four hundred sixty four. You can do the same thing when you are uh, doing decimals, but make sure that since you are multiplying um, 145 times, uh, 1.45 times 320, you're gonna have a third row of placeholder zeros. So let's do a couple of practices. And for less than a percent, I'm gonna change, let's make that note real quick. Okay, so fractions less than 1%, you're going to use decimals always. Just because it's easier to multiply. So if I have 0.25% of 58, I'm going to make this into a decimal. So in order to make it to a decimal, I got to move my decimal over two times because I'm actually dividing by 100. So it's 0 0.0025 times 58. So I'm just going to multiply. 5 times 8 is 40. 8 times 2 is 16 plus 4 is 20. 8 times 0 is 0 plus 2. And the rest are zeros. Placeholder 0 here. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 2 is 12. 5 times 0 plus 1 is 1. And then zeros. So I'm going to add these. Sorry, I'm going kind of off the grid here. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4 decimals. So I'm going to move it 1, 2, 3, 4 times. My answer then is 0 0.1450. All right, we got about two minutes to do some practice problems, so let's work on some practice problems. And then you can do the knowledge check. All right, let's say I have 128% of 550. I'm going to change the um, 128 to a decimal, because to me I like decimals. So 128 times 550, this will also give you practice on triple digit multiplication. 0 times 8 is 0, 0 times 2 is 0, 0 times 1 is 0. Placeholder here because I'm multiplying the tenths place. 5 times 8 is 40. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 4 is 14. Oops, carry the 1. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 1 is 6. Now I'm multiplying the hundreds place, so I need two zeros. Five times eight is 40. Five times two is 10 plus four is 14. Five times one is five plus one is six. Add these together. I have two decimal places, so I'm gonna move it two times. My answer should be 704. All right, and let's quickly do, um, actually we don't have time. So you can do some practice problems um, in 2.7 in your book if you would like, um, or we will be working on it in class as well. So have a good night.